Hey, what's up YouTube? Thanks for joining. Today we are going to do episode two of Dinner and a Story. Except, I'm not gonna tell you one story. I'm gonna tell you several stories uh, just to make you smile today. The things that have happened to me over the years that make me laugh and so hope to make you laugh today. Uh, excited, I'm gonna make uh, not a meal or a whole dinner. I'm going to show you how I prepare a steak. I have a nice, beautiful uh, one inch thick plus a little bit of uh, a boneless ribeye, uh, looks beautiful. We're gonna do a reverse sear on it. I know most of you probably cook steaks, know how to cook steaks. I'm just showing you how I prepare a steak and I'll tell you some stories to have a laugh all the, all the way through. Thanks for tuning in, subscribe, comment, like, share, and let's get right into the vid. <sighs> So here we go, we got this big, beautiful, look, nice, thick steak. First thing we wanna do is pat it dry. Um, definitely wanna take out some of the moisture because the reverse sear, what we're doing is you first bake it in, in the oven and then you finish it on a hot pan. So we want to eliminate as much uh, moisture as we can. So I got some pink Himalayan salt and you got to go super, super, super liberal and generous with this salt because you're, you will really want it to bake and you want the flavor to get into the steak because it's a big thick steak. So you're gonna, we're going to season now and then we're going to season uh, when we sear. I'm loving this stuff. This is uh, crushed peppercorn and garlic. Uh, really good. Uh, it gets a nice flavor to the steak. And you really want to push that into the meat. Yeah. Want to just roll it all sides. Pick up all that seasoning that didn't get in there. Want to get it all. Oh, that's good. Look at me right there. Okay, so what I got now is my steak in this throwaway tray, which is great, and then I have a, a meat. Uh, thermometer uh, and that's important I'm gonna uh, take it off at about 90 uh, because I'm looking for a nice medium rare um, I like rare to medium rare so I'm gonna take it off 90 because we're gonna let it rest one of the benefits of doing a reverse sear is after it comes out of the oven you let it rest um, and then when you after you sear it in the hot pan then you can take it off and just slice it up it's ready to go you don't have to rest it again so I'm gonna take it off at 90 so it's important to measure it so Got the oven already preheated. I think I'm gonna do 90, I'm gonna go to 95. Let me tell you a story. This one time, me and my friend Matt, he's one of my best friends, we were far too old for this to take place, but uh, we were hanging out at the fire one time um, at the fireplace at my house, and we thought it'd be funny to uh, throw some gas into the fire. We filled a cup of gas, like like a cup like this, just full of gas. And so like, we we like placed it into the fire and we kind of like ran away, already just not a good idea. And um, there was like a small little like flare up and, and we were like, oh, that was cool. And and so we sat back down by the fire, moved in close and, and um, we didn't know, but the cup was still completely full of gas and slowly melting. And so about five minutes later, it melted the cup enough, the gas poured out and it went boom! And it was like a 15 foot flame and it burned our eyebrows off and man, that was a good time. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> Lost my thingies. Yeah! <gasps> okay, I just took it out. Uh, it's at the temp I want. Uh, now the most important thing to do is let it rest. Let it rest. 10-15 um, minutes, just let it rest before we sear it in a hot pan. Did you hear me say, let it rest? But do we know why we let it rest? We let it, we let it rest 
for all the juices to redistribute back into the meat. See, when you cook something, it tenses up, and, and but, but what we wanna do is let the meat relax and all the juices will, will redistribute throughout the meat so that when we sear it, it'll lock it in, and then when we slice it open, no juices will run out, and when you eat it, it will remain juicy and delicious. Let's do it. By the way, I'm in the kitchen of our of where I play basketball, as you can see through the window. That's where we play hoops. Um, this is the kitchen in our gym, in the fellowship hall of our church. So it's fun to light a gas grill. Now we have a nice, big, beautiful gas grill here, and I get to light it with this. But it can be dangerous, so uh, don't try this at home, especially if you don't have a gas grill. You can't even try it at home. Step one. Turn on the gas. I hear it. Step two, wait like one, two, three, four, five seconds. Okay, wait a little longer. Okay, holy mackerel. Okay, this is like Gordon Ramsay does this flip thing sometimes. He goes, all right. Boom. Now I'm gonna heat up the pan, start to get it nice and hot. I want this thing as hot as possible to get a really, really nice sear on the steak. See, it's really cool that we're here because normally I would cook outside on the charcoal grill. Um, because because you wanna get it so hot, um, it, it, you know, you're gonna get a lot of smoke and that kind of stuff. So we have a big hood here and, and so you can get it really hot in here, which is awesome. But I have set off many fire alarms in my day cooking steaks. If, if you would like to hear about those stories, you can message Ash. She'll, t she'll be glad to tell you all the times that I almost burned the house down. You know, a lot of people call me a clown. They say, man, you're a clown. Uh, and, and you know, the funny thing about that is I actually was a clown. When I was like 11 or 12, I was in a clown ministry for, for some time. Uh, and a, a couple in our church did a ministry called the clown ministry and they would go to nursing homes and places like that and I thought that was a cool thing so I got a clown outfit it was ridiculous it had um, it was like a big wire thing around me polka dots colors I wore a wig my mom painted my face uh, and and I would go and I would juggle for um, juggle for the people and tell jokes and here's the worst the worst part about the story there's two really bad things about this story the first is my clown name uh, I don't know why I settled on this I don't know what inspiration I got from this it's a horrible name it's an embarrassment to clowns everywhere but my name was candy candy the clown yes um, I just I just don't know I don't even know why um, and then the second thing was, we would go into nursing homes and hospitals, and those were places that I wasn't really comfortable going in at the time. I just had a really hard time with it. The smell, the, the everything just made me uh, nervous and sick. And so, uh, imagine Candy the Clown walking in to juggle and tell jokes while he's trying not to gag from the smell. So, you know, there I am, like, trying not to gag, I'm trying to juggle. and. Um, you could say, uh, that guy's a clown. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make very simple, very simple but delicious rosemary butter, uh, rosemary garlic butter um, to, to pour over the top of the steak after, after it's done. So, if you're wondering how I'm doing on my weight loss journey, things are going very well. I've been really trying to focus on what I'm eating and how I'm eating and everything like that. Some days are better than other days. But I am very close to being down 150 pounds. Uh, I'm at, weighed myself today and I'm at 317. So very close to hitting another milestone of 150. So really, really excited about that. Okay, so I put it back in uh, to the oven to, to go a little bit more. I didn't like how it, even though the thermometer was telling me a certain thing, I didn't like how it felt. Uh, you can always judge a steak by how it feels. So um, you can use, there's a few different methods. You can use your, your finger touching method, which is you touch right underneath your thumb. And that's rare, mid-rare, medium, 
and then, you know, well done. So, uh, or you could do the, the good old face trick, which is rare, medium rare. Uh, actually, it's rare, medium rare, and then medium to well done, like in the generic. Those are just little things you can do to see where your meat's at. Okay, here we go. Now we're ready to sear. I added a little more steak, a little more salt to the top of the steak. I'm keeping off the hood because I want you to hear that that beautiful sizzle. I'm gonna lay it away from me. Oh yeah. Push it down a little bit. That's what you want to hear right there. I'm gonna turn this on. See what I said about the smoke? Woo! Searing away. Look at that. Yeah. Now what we gotta do is render the fat down on each side. There's a ton, you know, there's a fat cap on each side, you know, there's fat. And so we wanna stand this up and get that rendered out, get it nice and seared. Okay, I trimmed a little bit off. Uh, I'm gonna cut into this, uh, but uh, I'm letting the, the, the pan cool down and uh, kept the burner on because I'm gonna make my sauce in just a few minutes, right? Right after I slice into this, so. Mm. It's maybe, maybe a touch over. But it looks really good. Okay, so we still have the, the fat in the pan from from the steak and we're gonna throw our butter and rosemary in all together and just kind of put that up together. It's gonna take on all the flavor of the of the steak in there, the juices and the rosemary in there. And then we're gonna pour this right over our sliced steak. We're gonna pour this right over the top. A little more pink Himalayan salt right over the top. There you go. Cutting a nice piece. Let's give it a try. Super tender. <laughs> Woo! I love steak. If you like steak, give this video a like, a comment, a share, and all those things. Man, that's good. Cook steak, enjoy it. Cook it for your family, cook it for your loved ones. Use lots of salt and pepper and garlic. I forgot to put the garlic in, man.